Over the last few months on Zwift, I've been slowly ticking off all the in-game route badge achievement unlocks, but keeping a track of which ones I've done and which ones I haven't isn't the easiest of tasks. Now in game, to check out which ones you've done and which ones you haven't, you've got to start a ride, go back to the main menu, click on badges and scroll down and see the ones you haven't done. But even from there, there's no distance information or no elevation information. I have been using a spreadsheet to keep track of what I've done and what I haven't, but there's a much, much easier way there now out on the web. And this is it, ZwiftHub.com. ZwiftHub.com is a third party site that isn't associated with Zwift in any way. There's no automatic links of what you've done and what you haven't with your account. There's no API links there. You have to manually click things. However, it does allow you to find routes, track your achievements and analyze segments. My first use of this website was to look for the lead in information on certain routes. Sometimes the lead in will be a few kilometers. Sometimes it's almost half the distance of the route that you'll be doing. I think Highline has a 10 kilometer lead in. ZwiftHub.com has all the information there. That's what I was first using it for. Now I'm using it to track everything that I'm doing in game and the filtering and being able to plan the next ride is fantastic. Now this is the exact functionality that I would love to see in Zwift in the My Zwift dashboard and in the companion app. But for now, you'll find it over on ZwiftHub.com. So let's jump in and have a look at what it's all about. Now I'm signed in here to ZwiftHub.com with my profile. And you can see here all of the routes are listed for, that we can choose within Zwift there. So there's a lot of them to go for. So for each course or route listed here on ZwiftHub.com, there is a ton of information packed into that little tiny square. I'll use just the first one here as my example. RI designates Richmond 2015 UCI Worlds course. 16.2 kilometers plus 0.5 lead in if you were to select this route and do the unlock achievement. 157 meters of elevation plus an extra three meters of elevation for the lead in. There's the course profile listed there. We can click on that and grab a larger view of what's going on. That's what you can expect. Print that out, tape it to your handlebars if you're really keen with all the information included there. The yellow cup designates that I've done the route. I can just click that and say I haven't done it, but that's how I designate that I have done the route. So that's ticked off. There is the Strava link to that segment. So jumping over here, there's my all time PR on that. So there's all the Strava information and I am a Strava subscriber. So I can click on my results and see how many times I've done that particular route. 16, so it seems. So the Strava routes there. Lists whether it has a KOM jersey, a sprint jersey and how many and a lap jersey. So that is all the case there. And on the little down arrow, you'll get a top down view with an animation of the route itself. Everything you need to know about the route and also with a little yellow cup there, whether you've done it or not. Now that applies to every single route on Zwift. So scroll, 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 scroll. There is a lot there. But backing up a little bit to the badges, if we click on there on the badges. Now I've gone and loaded the Zwift mobile app. I've gone through and ticked off all the badges that I have here and you just simply toggle them on or off whether you've done them or not. So I've done everything here except the masochist, which if we mouse over, it shows us what that's all about. Climb Alpha Zwift 25 times. I still think I've got another 10 to go. But for any of these, you can mouse over and figure out what they're about. So here, 10 ride-ons in one ride. Statistician, you've connected your Strava accounts. Uh, no big deal, you've ridden 100 miles in one ride. And you can go through the rest of them there. Oh, there's even extra credits here. So lift off, we have ridden Elpta Zwift in under one hour. Hmm, keen to see if they put an, a uh, Mon Von 2 one in there. Under, what, two hours for that? Gonna be a bit of a slog. Okay, so they're the badges. The route achievements, as I showed you just before, you just toggle them on and off within the list to indicate that you've done them or not. And then from there, clicking on achievements, you'll get the overall progress. Now, the depressing part about this is I found out I'm only halfway there, or just a little bit over halfway, with 40 routes done out of 76 on the list. Kilometers, not even halfway there. I'm only 840 kilometers into 2,200 kilometers required to tick off all these routes. Now, this does include the new France and Paris routes, which we'll get to in just a moment. Elevation wise, XP wise, and the stars are for the badges for the gigawatts and the bigger than Yenzi and things. So 38 out of 39 of those, I've got to climb out the Zwift another 10 times. There's a bit of a slog for that. Below that, you've got the different worlds. So Watopia, London, New York, Innsbruck, Yorkshire, Richmond, France, and Paris. So France has seven extra route badges. Paris has two. One's already ticked off, how about that? Now we will get to some of those this weekend with La Tap de Tour, starting off on Saturday, running through to Sunday, and then the Discovery Rides after that. So we'll be able to all tick some of those off. Okay, back here over to the filters. Now this is where ZwiftHub.com really, really shines. So resetting everything there, we'll click down on worlds, we'll show only today's worlds. 
because that's what will show up. We'll have uh, Watopia and the two guest worlds, which are today New York and Richmond. Cool, it's only just selected those, right? That's what we have for the worlds to select. Distance, elevation, comms, doesn't really matter for now. We'll go through those in a moment. But achievements, uh, non-achieved route rides, and sort by, we'll go distance, so the shortest. So today, not including lead-ins, there's my filtered list of things to choose from that I can go and ride and unlock my next badge. So the High Line, 10.5 kilometers with a lead-in of 10 kilometers, making the entire ride, what was that, 20.5 kilometers. That says it's the shortest to do, well, the shortest route without the lead-in. Next one, Lady Liberty, 12.4 plus 0.4 lead-in, and TikTok, which I still haven't selected to do, even though I've probably done that route. We can check that by going to Strava here. If I've set a time on that, there we go. I have set the time, but that was before the route badges were in play. So I've got to go back and specifically say TikTok and then ride that route to get that unlock achievement. Okay, so there's today's list of what I would call very low hanging fruit, the shortest distance for me to go and get my next badge. But if I wanted to make things a little harder and see what would take the most climbing to get my next badge with today's maps, uh, we sort by elevation. So elevation, reverse sort there, uh, Uber Pretzel. 2300 meters of climbing. Next up, the Four Horsemen, 2100 meters, or Quatch Quest, which was 1700 meters. So that's a, just a quick overview of using the filters for the route badges that I haven't got just yet. But there's any number of uh, ways you can carve this up and uh, use the filter. So we'll scroll back up, we'll hit Reset All. And if we wanted to say sort by, use the same sort by. So the most, uh, let's say the, the longest distance route on Zwift, we can just simply click on that. Nothing much changed there. PRL full wins that one at 173.3 kilometers plus 0.5 lead in. Um, most elevation on Zwift. Again, PRL full. I think I'm gonna leave that one to last. That looks like an absolute hell of a day on the bike. Let's click down on that. And it's just, I, yeah, the loops and loops and loops of the London Loop and Box Hill a number of times. Hmm. Now as a preview of what's coming up with the new worlds on Zwift, Paris and France, we can Scroll down here, clear all France and Paris, and you can dive in and have a look at what the routes will entail. We have Mont Ventoux, which looks like an absolute monster. What do we have? 19 kilometers, average of 8%. That's gonna be a tough day in the saddle for that one. Next up, uh, we have all the other routes that are quite busy. So that's the longer route, so 60 kilometers there, with lots going on, a couple of sprints, well, a number of sprints on that course. And Sean's at least say, where are you? You should be pretty easy to spot because you should be almost dead flat. Well, I actually know it's based on the, um, the gradient scale on the side that shows. Sean's at least say, it looks like a hilly stage. It's not, it only has that one little dip and just a slow long drag over the 6.6 Ks of that with obviously the sprint. Now there's a lot more fun to be had over on ZwiftHub.com, just digging around information you can find. So clicking on the comms, actually first up, we'll reset all the filters, so reset all. And let's just say we want to find all routes that include uh, reverse Watopia Epic KOM. So Watopia, uh, Epic KOM reverse, bang. The pretzel includes that route there. What about uh, Titans Grove, uh, forward direction? There we go, there's two routes that includes that. Um, or if we want to go over to Innsbruck, Oof, Innsbruck KOM, and there's three routes that include the Innsbruck KOM. Not a lot of roads on Innsbruck, so that Innsbruck KOM does feature quite a bit on the routes there. So that's a really quick overview of the web version of ZwiftHub.com, but the mobile version is just as handy for ticking off things if you've done them on the bike or if you're planning your next session and you're not near a computer. So loading up ZwiftHub.com here over on my phone, I'm logged in and we can use the filter here. First of all, we'll reset everything there. Worlds, today's worlds only. And then we want achievements, so not achieve routes. And you can see there, it comes up with a list of courses that I can choose today before I get on the bike. And I know to uh, click through the right menus and get riding straight away. But if we want to filter that based on, let's just say sort by distance again. And there we go, the High Line, Lady Liberty, and TikTok. So the three that we saw across the top before now load up in the mobile app and away I go. And once I've completed the route, even if I'm still on the bike on Zwift, I can pull up the mobile version of Zwift Hub, click the little, uh, cup there, we are done. Another one bites the dust. Okay, I'll leave it there for today. There's a quick overview, ZwiftHub.com, I'll put links below. It's something that I use on the daily. Very, very handy little tool. And as I've said, it's something that I really think Zwift need to roll into the general service offering of Zwift on the web and the companion app.
that kind of functionality is absolutely brilliant for planning your next ride. As always, if you like this one, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Always more tips to come. Thanks for watching.